Hi everyone, I'm Madeline Garcia, lead teaching artist for youth and community programs at Minnesota Center for Book Arts. Welcome to Mail is Magic, a show about making mail and connecting with others. In the last episode, we talked about the movement of mail art or correspondence art and the process of sending art through the mail. Uh, we specifically talked about envelopes and objects and how they can contain artfulness and how all you need is a stamp to send them. I want to talk about another aspect of mail art, which is playing on the systems um, and things that the Postal Service already has or does. Artist stamps or artist stamps refer to postage-like art that is not postage. Um, it's not trying to pass as postage or defraud the Postal Service, but instead um, attempts to present stamps as art. And these artist stamps definitely should not be placed in the top uh, right-hand corner of an envelope to be confused with stamps. So artist stamp creators um, often include their work um, on legitimate mail alongside valid postage in order to decorate envelopes with art and artist stamps are also um, made and can be found in sheets, uh, just like when you purchase stamps from the post office. Um, artists often have collaborated on sheets of artist stamps. It's a really nice prompt and thing to send around, um, and it can help foster a creative network or a postal network. Mail art artists value exchanging ideas and the sense of belonging to a global community of art makers. What I love about artist stamps is their restrained quality. Sometimes you will overlook them because they are really similar to uh, official postage stamps. And I also love how fun they are to receive. They're sort of like a collectible. So I do want to show you a few examples I've pulled of artist stamps. This first one is a sheet by Russell Butler. Um, I love that each stamp is of a different portrait. This is inspiring. I already have ideas of how maybe I could make a stamp for each person in my family or friends. And I also love the color choice of the paper. This next sheet of assorted stamps is by Keith Bates. Um, I love all of the use of logos in here and sort of this crude internet imagery. Uh, and I also love the use of numbers, which remind me of the uh, postage amount that is often included on stamps. This next one is a postcard by Pi Purgatory Press. And even though this is a postcard of artist stamps, I think it is incredible. Um, the imagery and drawings are so simple and subtle and perfect. And I also love the minimal use of color. This last slide has two mail art pieces from Chuck Welch, AKA Cracker Jack Kid. So now that you're making mail art, it might be time that you get yourself a pseudonym or alternative name. But we have a sheep of artist stamps on the left and I love the use of frames and the stamp design. And then on the right, we have those stamps um, on an envelope and they look wonderful with the official USPS postage beside them. Hopefully you have a better image of what artist stamps can look like. Um, I think making artist stamps is a wonderful prompt because their form is so rigid. So uh, you already know the size or about the size of the thing you'll be making. Uh, it's already established. So all you have to do is design and create the look. So to make our own artist stamps, the first thing we'll want to do is make perforated paper so you can rip your stamps apart if you want. Um, and I recommend using thicker paper, at least a little bit thicker than copy paper. Book artists and mail art artists often use a Rossback perforator. Um, and this is a machine that has a bunch of sharp needles lined up um, and a foot which compresses them and perforates paper. Um, it's super fun to use. Most of the artist stamps I've made, um, I've used that for, but I do want to show you how to perforate paper at home. 
Um, so one idea is that you could use a sewing machine if you have access to that and you would just uh, sew straight and not use thread and that would create those uh, small holes for perforation. Another thing you could do is to use a ruler, a awl, which is a bookmaking tool, but you could also use a needle. And you might need some parent um, help on this, some parental supervision. And then a sponge or something to protect your table while you're perforating. And then of course, a piece of paper and a pencil. So the first thing you'll do is draw the lines to which you will perforate on. Um, so I have my piece of paper here. And let me just show some real stamps for reference. So here is some vintage US Postal Service stamps. You can see that they only cost eight cents back then, which is pretty awesome. So I wanna make my stamps about this height and then I'm just going to draw a line with pencil to mark where I'll perforate. And you could really make your stamps any size. I know some people like to make square stamps. It's fun to try around with different shapes. And then I'll just do the width of the stamps here. And I'm just eyeballing. In my own creative practice, I really like um, to not measure things and to just eyeball things because it gives a more handmade quality, but if you want to measure, please go ahead and do that. Okay, that looks good. The next thing I'll do is to put my piece of paper on top of my sponge um, and start poking holes on the line. Um, let's see, I'll start with this center hole. And it'll take some time to make sure that you're able to get all of your holes to be the same size and the spacing you want. It probably won't come out perfect, but as I was just saying, I'm a fan of that. So you can see here that I have some of one done, and I'll just go ahead and go the other way. <laughs> Oops. So this is starting to look like a stamp. I realize that my awl here is a little bigger. Um, the width of the needle is a little thicker than most perforation, so on your end, you might want to do some experimenting to see what works best here. So I'm going to stop about right here, but I do just want to show you that these do rip. They, the perforation is working. So from here, the next thing that you'll do is start designing your stamp. Many folks and um, mail art artists like to incorporate numbers into their artist stamp design, and those kind of uh, replicate the numbers that uh, real postage often has on their stamps, and I think that is a really fun place to start. I do want to show you um, some examples of artist stamps that I have made. Uh, so here is an example I did making sort of house forms um, and I actually just used cut paper and applied it to this perforated paper. I used cut paper because that's one of my favorite mediums as an artist, um, but I'm not exactly sure this how this will send. So one thing that you can also try around with <laughs> um, is copying and printing your artist stamps. So um, I might scan this and print it out and re-perforate the sheets. So here's another example. 
And this I just used pencil and pen with. Um, I wanted to play around with a repeating pattern like we often see in um, USPS stamp sheets. Uh, so I just alternated patterns here and clearly I was inspired by 29, 2020's uh, pandemic times. Here's another example I did and I just did watercolor forms here. Um, I wanted to show folks that your stamps don't have to be text or number based and in fact they can be abstract if you want them to. Alright, here's another example. Um, so I started by watercoloring these paper forms here and I have some vessels but it's really also fun to experiment by drawing or creating images that extend past your perforations. Um, and that is definitely something that I would encourage as well. You can get out of the box, as they say. And this next example I have here um, is some artist stamps I made using rubber stamps. Uh, stay tuned to further episodes of Mail is Magic because we will be diving into rubber stamping. Um, but yeah, I just used different rubber stamps and different ink colors here to do some overlap. And then this last example I have uh, was given to me, and I don't know the artist, but I do know that it's from a kid's book. But I love all the color here and that no stamp um, repeats or is like another one. So hopefully these also inspired you. I want to wrap up this episode with a few prompts for you. Uh, the first prompt I have is to design a sheet of artist stamps of your own. And my second prompt for you is to affix an artist stamp you've made to a package or piece of mail that you are sending. And of course, don't forget to use uh, actual postage as well. Please feel free to send us some mail art at the Minnesota Center for Book Arts. We would love to see it. And we're actually going to be installing all the mail we receive on our front window on Washington Avenue in downtown Minneapolis. Um, you can mail us at 1011 Washington Avenue South, Suite 100, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Area code 55415. <laughs> That's zip code, I mean. Um, if you just want to share a photo of the mail, uh, the mail art you've been making, go ahead and use the hashtag MailedIt. Uh, and we would love to see your mail there on the digital sphere as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. I'll be back next week with more mail art. In the meantime, feel free to share this video online. And if you'd like to donate, you can head to our website, mnbookarts.org. Thank you so much.